Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. I just fought Vanakas. Not more than an hour ago. And I recall that I had this book. Vanakas and Borlaw. I think I need to peruse this. Who was this? Halgird walked into the king's ham? I'm having trouble with this font. That Lordus evening. Is that 5 a.m.? And I don't know what that says. His face clouded with sadness. While he ordered a mug of grief, his mates, Garaz and Ziamara, joined him with moderately sincere concern. What's wrong with you, Halgird? asked Ziamara. You're later than usual, and there's a certain air of tragedy you've dragged in with you. Have you lost money? Or a nearest and dearest? I haven't lost any money, Halgood grimaced, but I have just received word from my nephew that my cousin, Aliok, has died. Perfectly natural, he says, just old age. Aliok was ten years younger than me. Aw, that's terrible. But it goes to show that it's important to savor all of life's possibilities. Cause you never know when your time is coming, said Garaz. Who had been sitting at the same stool at the Smoky Corner Club for the last several hours. He was not one cursed with self-awareness. Life's short, all right, agreed Ziamara, but if you pardon a sentimental thought, few of us are aware of the influence we'll have after our deaths. Perhaps there's comfort there. For example, I have told you the story, have I told you the story, of Vanakas and Borlor? I don't believe so, said Halgird. Vanakas was a Daedra, said Zayamara, throwing a few dribbles of flynn on the hearth to cast the proper mood. And though our tale took place many, many years ago, it would be fair to say that Vanakas still is one. For what, after all, is time to the immortal Daedra? Actually, Garaz interrupted, I understand that the notion of immortality, I'm trying to offer our friend an inspirational tale in his hour of need, Zayamora growled. I don't have all bloody night to tell it, if you don't mind. You wouldn't have heard of Vernakis, said Zayamara, abandoning the theme of immortality for the time being, for even at the height of his power and fame, he was considered feeble by the admittedly high standards of the day. Of course, this lack of respect infuriated him, and his reaction was typical of Lesser Daedra. He went on a murderous rampage. Soon, word spread through all the villages of the, in the Colovian West of the unholy terror. Whole families had been butchered, castles destroyed, orchards and fields torched and cursed, so nothing would ever grow there again. To make things even worse for the villagers, Vernacus began getting visitations from an old rival of his, of his from Oblivion. She was a Daedra. Sedusa named Horavatha. And she delighted in taunting him to see how angry she could make him become. You flooded a village, and that's supposed to be impressive, 
she would sneer. Try collapsing a continent and maybe you'll get a little attention. Vanakis could become pretty angry. He didn't come very close to collapsing the continent of Tamriel, but it wasn't for lack of trying. A hero was needed to face the Mad Daedra, and fortunately, one was available. His name was Borlor, and it was said that he had been blessed by the goddess Kinnereth. That was the only explanation for his inhuman accuracy with his bow and arrow, for he never missed a target. As a child, he had driven his marksmanship tutors wild with frustration. They would tell him how to plant his feet, how to knock a bolt, the proper grip for the cord, and best method of release. He ignored all the rules, and somehow every time the arrow would catch a breath of wind and sail directly to his target. It did not matter if the quarry was moving or still at very close range or miles away. Whatever he wanted to strike with his arrow would be struck. Borlor answered the call when one of the villagers, one of the village mayors, begged him for help. Unfortunately, he was not as great a horseman as he was an archer. As he rode through the forest towards the mayor's town, a place called Evans Aken, Evans Akan, Evans Aken. Anyway, Vanakas was already murdering everyone there. Horavatha watched and stifled back a yawn. Murdering a small town mayor isn't going to put you in famous company, you know. What you need is a great champion to defeat someone like Isgrimor or Peniel Whitestrake or... She stared at the figure emerging from the forest. That fellow. Who's he, growled Vanakis between bites of the mayor's quivering body. The greatest archer in Tamriel he's never missed. Borlor had his bow strung and was pointing it at the Daedra. For a moment, Vinakas felt like laughing. The fellow was not even aiming straight, but he had a well-honed sense of self-preservation. There was something about the man's look of confidence that convinced the Daedra that Horavatha wasn't lying. As the bolt left the bow... Vanakas vanished in a sheet of flame. The arrow impaled a tree. Borlor stood and stared. He had missed a target. In oblivion, Vanakas raged, fleeing before a mortal man like that. Not even the barest scamp would have been so craven. He had exposed himself for the weak cowardly creature he was. As he considered what steps to take to salvage the situation, he found himself face to knee with the most fearsome of the Daedra princes, Molag Ball. I never thought anything much of you, Vanakis, the giant boomed, but you have more than proven your worth. You have shown the creatures of Mundus that the Daedra are more powerful than the blessings of the gods. The other denizens of Oblivion quickly agreed, as they always did, with the view of Molag Ball. The Daedra are, after all, always very sensitive about their various defeats at the hands of mortal champions. Vinakas was complaint, com proclaimed the elusive beast, the unpursuable one, he who cannot be touched. Oh, he said that often. Now I understand why. The bane of Kinnereth, shrines devoted to him, began to be built 
in remote corners of Morrowind and Skyrim. Borlor, meanwhile, now found flawed, was never again called to rescue a village. He was so heartbroken over his failure to strike his target that he became a hermit and never restrung his bow again. Some months later, he died. Unmourned and unremembered. Is this really the tale you thought would cheer me? Asked Halgert incredulously. I've heard the King of Worms told more inspirational stories. Wait, smiled Zayamara. I'm not finished yet. For a year's time, Vanakis was content to watch his legend grow and his fledgling, fledgling worship spread from his home in oblivion. He was, in addition to being cowardly and inclined towards murderous rages, also a very lazy creature. His worshippers told tales of their master avoiding the bolts of a thousand archers, of moving through oceans without getting wet, and other feats of avoidance that he would rather not have to demonstrate in person. The real story of his ignominious retreat from Borlor was, thankfully, forgotten. The bad news when it came was delivered to him with some relish by Horavatha. He had delighted in her jealousy and his growing reputation, so it was with a cruel smile she told him, your shrines are being assaulted. Who dares, he roared. Everyone who passes them in the wilderness feels the need to throw a stone, Horavatha purred. You can hardly blame them after all. They represent he who cannot be touched. How could anyone be expected to resist such a target? She has a point. Vanakas peered through the veil into the world of Mundus and saw that it was true. One of his shrines in the Colovian West Country was surrounded by a large platoon of mercenary soldiers who delighted in pelting it with rocks. His worshippers huddled inside praying for a miracle. In an instant he appeared before the mercenaries and his rage was terrifying to behold. They fled into the woods before he even had a chance to murder one of them. His worshippers threw open the wooden door to the shrine and dropped to their knees in joy and fear. His anger melted. Then a stone struck him. Then another! He turned to face his assailants, but the air was suddenly filled with rocks. Vinacus could not see them, but he heard mercenaries in the woods laugh. It's not even trying to move out of the way. It's impossible not to hit him, guffawed another. With a roar of humiliation, the Daedra bounded into the shrine, chased by the onslaught. One of the stones knocked the door closed behind him, striking him in the back. His face broke, anger and embarrassment disappearing, replaced by pain. He turned, shaking to his worshippers who huddled in the shadows of the shrine, their faith shattered. Who? Where? <laughs> Did you get the wood to build this shrine? Vanakis groaned. Most from a cop's is that right? Cops of trees near the village of Evans Aken. His high priest shrugged. Vidakis nodded. 
he dropped forward, revealing the deep wound in his back, a rusted arrowhead buried in a whirl of, of wood of the door had jolted loose in the assault and impaled him. The Daedra vanished in a whirlwind of dust. The shrines were abandoned shortly thereafter. Though Vanakis did have a brief resurgence as the patron of spirit of limitations and impotence before fading from memory altogether. The legend of Borlaw himself never became very well known either. But there are still some who tell the tale like myself. And we have the advantage of knowing what the great archer himself didn't know on his deathbed. Oh my god. By the gods, his final arrow found its target after all. What a remarkable tale. Funny and remarkable. Vanakus and Borlor. Oh. All right, with that, I think it's time to head to bed. So exciting. Lydia? Oh, there you are. Good night. Lydia, good morning. I need you to take some dictation and then have good a courier. You. Thank you. Have a courier send the letter to I am your sword Vigilant and your shield. Paladin Keeper Cyrus. Long life to you, Thane. Thank you. All right, I'm ready to begin. Cyrus. I have infiltrated this new Vigilant of Stendar. On face value, they seem to be a legitimate faction. They have sent me on some worthwhile, worthy me missions. Yes, that's missions. To eliminate a vampire and a Daedra. So they are doing the things that Stendar approves of and sanctions. However, there is a darkness about them, especially the one who calls himself Altano, who for some reason, and I haven't yet asked him, is masked. Up for a little hunting? No, not at the moment. Make sure you're getting this now. What Long life to you, is he hiding, I wonder? But anyhow, I'm off to meet him. And I will keep you posted of anything else that may arise. So my disguise as a, a dawn god... I don't know what they call themselves. I'm not a mercenary, but whatever. Uh, has worked. They have snatched me up. They want me to oh, be... hey there. Hey. Please... Please make sure you're writing this down. They Honor want... To you, my <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they immediately have accepted me as a uh, member of the Vigilant. I have not tipped my hand that I already am a member of a different faction of Vigilant. A high-ranking member at that. But we will keep that secret for now. All right. I'm off to meet with this mysterious Altano. Stendar's mercy and blessings upon you. All right, that's it, Lydia. 
Please make sure you get all that written down and get a courier to send that to Solitude. Good day. All right, and I think, let's see here. I need to talk to Altano in the Bannered Mare. Few seconds for my supper is all I ask. Ripe fruit and fresh vegetables for sale. I need trinkets for your good lady. All crafted by the great Aorlan, Ray Main himself. Ah, here he is. Good morning. You know, I'm going to ask the question now, since it's on my mind. Why are you wearing a mask? What are you hiding? All right, you can choose not to answer. How about this question, then? What have you found out about the summoner? There was an incident with a Daedra in the inn in Windhelm. It mm -hmm. might be related to our investigation. We should check it out. <clears throat> All right. I suppose we should. So he's not going to answer the question about the mask. So me. It's just so odd and mysterious for someone that wants to represent divinity a few seconds for my supper is all I ask. need something and holiness ripe fruit and fresh vegetables for sale shiny Ooh. trinkets for your good lady Altano must be lost the yes the main Lord gate is this way main himself. I'll see you in Windhelm hmm We are the Vigilance of Stendar. We received report of a Daedra in your inn. Beds. Take a look at this. He was here. The guards won't help. The people won't help. Someone's going to get killed. Somebody do something! Leave it to us. We'll take care of that matter immediately. But how did the Daedra appear? Was it summoned? Uh, yes. A woman casting spells without asking her permission. Next thing you know, someone gets hurt. What manner of magic is this? By the gods. I don't even know what to say. Do you know where that woman is now? Nah, I don't think so. Best we all forget about her. Understood. We appreciate your cooperation. Come on, novice. We have to get rid of that Daedra. Oh, novice, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what little you know. You got some nice meat hooks there. Makes for a damn good punch. Hey, get up! Just five more minutes. Go Is... away. What the? Well, he doesn't seem very dangerous. I'll leave this one to you and continue my search for that summoner. Yes, you do that. Well, at least this isn't Vernacus, it's another one. Ah, so nice. Get up, Daedra. You're bothering the patrons. I know, I know. So what? Oh. Would you like to restate that? Ah, so nice. All right then. I you leave me no choice. No more. I, I yield. Someone do something. What are you doing? All right, that's done. Another Daedra heart. I'll leave the axe. Someone else may stumble upon it and want it.
Hmm? Yes? Altano. I banished that Daedra in the inn. Back to oblivion. I've never seen such a poor excuse for a Daedra. Hmm. Well, the summoner Neither is what's important. I. Judging by the traces of her magicka, she must be somewhere nearby. I will continue the search for her in Windhelm. I'll be at the inn if you need me. Yes? All right. Need something? Hmm? Well, I suppose I should go talk to him now. But... How did you get... I saw you cut. There is something going on here. Altano. You look troubled. What's wrong? I overheard a strange rumor from the guards. Apparently, there's a sinister man in Kynesgrove. Anyone who looks him in the eyes flies into a frenzy, they say. Really? As Vigilance of Stendar, we can't overlook something like that. Go to Kynesgrove and check out this rumor. I suppose we can't overlook it. Hmm. In my excitement, I forgot to tell that Daedra... That the suffering the Daedra cause will not go unpunished. Now. Oh, what happened? You know, at some point I need to come back here and find out who's murdering these women. Oh my word. The divine this smile on those who show mercy and charity. Good thing you did for Norelion, retrieving that file for him before he died. Man was obsessed. Yes, he was. All right, Kynes Grove. Here for work? No. Get Max, and bring me all the wood you can chop. It's not a place I come to very often. In fact, I think the last time I was here was to meet Delphine and hmm? face that dragon. Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. Good afternoon. You're looking Mining very stern. Mining is hard work, but we pay a fair price for any ore you dig up. All right. Mm -hmm. Hello. A glorious good day. Hello. With three bears down, the orc did frown, and bid the elf <gasps> goodbye. For none could know, t'was not for show, and someone had to die. <laughs> What do you want? Come to gawk at the Knight of Thorns? Well, here I am. For your viewing pleasure. Yes, I think I've viewed enough. Be gone. Yes, I will. Yes. Good day to you, friend. Hello. Greetings. A fine day to you. Wait. That man, sitting next to him, his face is bandaged, covering an eye. I am saddened by our parting. Yes, I'm sorry, but it's not you that I'm here to this see. This one needs something. Make it quick. It's you. I heard you can drive people mad if they look you in the eye. 
Is this true? Yes. Why are you asking? I'm so tired of this. Please leave me alone. Because I'm a Vigilant of Stendar. And if this has something to do with the Daedra, I must intervene. So now tell me, what happened to your right eye? I lost a bet to some woman. She gouged out my eye and shoved this strange stone in its place. A stone? After that, everyone who looked me in the eyes went mad. I'm so tired. Can you tell me anything about that, that woman? I was too drunk to remember anything about her. Oh, she had nice hips. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, well, I could give you Stendhal's mercy. Looks like you need it. No, thank you. I don't want to die. I can just cover it up with this bandage and everything will be fine. I won't use this eye unless some idiot attacks me. It, it's fine, really. Just please leave me alone. All right. For now. You seem harmless enough. Just keep that eye covered. All right, I guess I'm going to report back to Altano. I think the situation is under control here. Altano! Looks like you always are trying to ignore me. I wonder what that's all about. So... I'm back from, is it Kennereth? Kynes Grove. I'm sorry, I'm getting them confused. And the rumor was true, but Balor isn't hostile, and he doesn't have any evil intentions. That man, Balor, must be sent to Stendhal. What do you think will happen if that man loses control of his eye? Many people will suffer, don't you understand? I don't understand. He poses no threat. You must. Otherwise, you cannot be a Vigilant of Stendar anymore. Oh, really? Need something. <laughs> what little you know. Need something. All right. Still can't believe the gall of Altano to threaten to take away my membership to the Vigilant of Stendar. As if that even matters. <laughs> that man is quite full of himself. Come on in. We got warm food, warm drinks, and warm beds. All right. And then I told her about still the sitting here how peacefully. How can I assist? Hmm? Balor. What did she do? She's a girl. I'm right. sorry. It's good to toughen her up. But I must give you Stendhal's mercy. He's waiting for you. If this is your answer, then there's only one thing left to do. Really? And what's that? I'm getting out of here. Those are actually fighting. Do Don't set anything on fire, all right? Speak. Huh. That was Here some ability walk. he had. Get an axe and bring me all the wood you can chop. All right, he had glass daggers. Another redstone, interesting. Ring of peerless deaf hands for pickpocketing. Can sell it. My what is goodness, it? well met. There's some glass daggers here, if anyone wants to remove them from the corpse. Seen the remnants of the grove? That? Well, that was me. Me yeah, and my sister. Quick. And I'm sorry, but Stendhal's mercy be upon you, for the yes? vigil has yes, none quick. to spare. Came here to start a lumber mill. Who knew the Nords came All right, about? citizens. Bunch of old trees. What Stand back. It? Does he do this on purpose? I'm sure he saw me walk in the door. You got some nice meat hooks there. Makes for a damn good punch.
You know about Talos? He founded the Empire. Tell me about the Great War. I hear you were in the battle. Now there was a cellar here. We're the only temple in Skyrim that can openly worship Talos. Altano. I'm sorry. What would you like to talk about? It was against my better judgment. But I took care of Balor. Don't let it get to you. At times like this, a drink will make you feel better. Really? That's your only answer? So, you've had enough time to do your investigations? Do you have any clues on this summoner yet? I've got news from Stendar's beacon. Apparently she's been seen in Riften. Let's go to the beacon Riften. and listen to the details. Alright, and let's go. Yes? I just don't know what to do anymore. Wait, is he got here before me? It's a bit dark here. You know, he did give me this flask. Hmm. Wonder how much this will help. You're not Altano. Alright. I suppose I'm gonna have to wait until Altano gets here. I'll just go back and talk to my horse. Since you obviously are in no mood to conversate with me. Steer too. How are you? Ah, here he comes. Oh, the scout friend. What? You're certainly a long way from home. Yes, the rest of Skyrim is a much alien place to the Scar. I am one of a few who venture beyond our home. And what brings you all the way out here? I was sent by Freya to come and find Freya. you and deliver a gift. She wanted me to tell you that she appreciates all you have done. And apologizes if she seemed a bit terse when last you met. It took her some time to come to terms with the loss of Stor, her father. I'm sure. She wanted me to pass on this amulet of the Scar as her personal thanks. Oh, I appreciate Normally, that. Normally this trinket is held in the highest regard, only for the Shaman of the Scar. But only through your efforts are the Scar able to survive. So she felt you worthy to bear it. I'm honored. I am pleased. Guard it with care. And the All Maker continue to guide you, my friend. Thank Very you. Well. Stendar's mercy upon you. That was quite nice. To send a man all the way here to Skyrim to give me this amulet. Long time no see, Master Jacob. I'm glad to see you in good health. <laughs> Don't stand on ceremony, Altano. We're both vigilants here. True. Well, I heard you found the summoner. Vigilants found her in the Bee and Bob in Riften. They tried to seize her, but... But she summoned a powerful Daedra and they couldn't do much more then. And even worse, she summoned it in the middle of the inn and now it won't leave. We're fully occupied with chasing her, so I'm leaving the matter with the Daedra to you. Do you think you're up to it? Don't worry about it. That Daedra will regret being summoned. <laughs> That's reassuring. But still, be careful. By the way, about your partner. Altano mentioned your eyes in his letter. And it's really? true. As if Stendhal himself gazed at me. In any case, be careful with that Daedra. It's one of the more curious ones, so don't underestimate it. 
Well, let's go. Right. Thank you for the compliment on my eyes. Because it is as though Stendar is gazing at you with the divinity that glows within them. All right, B and Bob. If you've got the coin, you've come to the right place. Pull up a seat. Huh. Yes. How are you? How have you been? What is it? Hey, waiter. Get me more food. All right, then. Feast All right. on your flesh. Oh, he is out. Where is your summoner? Tell us, and we'll grant you a swift death. Death? Oh, a mortal yes, killing an immortal Daedra? You must be joking. And you want to know where my summoner is? Well, you can start looking in my stomach. <laughs> what? Over here. Another Daedra heart. Hey, in all my years, I've never seen such a thing. All my food, completely gone. Show really? me some coin. Oh, you've got some nerve. That's ridiculous. I mean, I just got here, and you're going to blame me for this? Well, this is a nice mess you've gotten me into. I'll call the guards. Hmm. Altano, can you lend me some gold? Oh, fine, if there's no other way. Thank you. Did you bring the coin? Carava, really? Here, here is your gold. I'd almost given up hope. Thank you. Mm hmm And what are you looking at? If you've okay. got the coin, you're welcome here. Otherwise, Let's go. I think we're road. I think yes, we are hitting the road. I think we're done. Jacob. We've dealt with the Daedra in the Bee and Bob. Very good. Stendar bless you for your trouble. Thank you. So, did you find the summoner yet? Yes, we chased her down into the Ratway, but couldn't catch her. She has a bodyguard clad in the ebony Ratway. armor. Okay. That mercenary is terribly strong. He broke through our formation head on. I've just sent a pursuit team after them both. I just hope everyone returns safely. And what should we do next? You should investigate Ratway. There is some evidence of Daedra summoning left behind. Although there are no reports of violence yet, you should still be very careful. Find out whether anything was actually summoned, and if it was, send it back to Oblivion. Right, very well. If you don't mind, I'd like to pray to Stendar while I'm here. Hmm, Stendar is so pleased with my activities. And it pleases me. All right, Altano. Let's see what you have for me now. You know, we're headed to the Ratway, but it looks like you've got something to say. What is it? In the Ratway? Hmm. I have friends in the Ragged Flagon. I bet I'll you do. I'll try and get some information from them. I'll go on ahead. You meet me there as soon as you're ready. All right. Very well. <laughs> 